Well, a warm welcome to this talk, Wednesday the 23rd of November, but this will be applicable whenever you're watching because I'm afraid there's more people being diagnosed with cancer at the moment and the trends indicate that this could be increasing. We're not going to talk about the causes of this, but what I want to talk about on this video is how to recognise it early. Because I think everyone out there watching knows that if you can diagnose cancer early and get effective treatment, your chances of remission and uh, recovery are much, much greater. So the information I'm going to give in the next 20 minutes is a bit lecture-like, I'm afraid. There's a bit of information to cover, but if you can stick with it, it really could save your life or, or the life of one, one of your friends or families. So the early warning signs of cancer, what do we look out for? What makes us think, oh, just a minute, I better go and see the doctor about that. Let's run through that now. So let's um, go here. Cancer early warning signs is what we're looking at because we want to catch this as early as we possibly can. Now, these notes here are actually from my book, which I've put the links there. You can free, make a free download of that. Or well, mostly from my book. I have updated it slightly. Uh, any unexplained bleeding? So uh, hematuria is, is blood in the urine. Blood in the urine is always abnormal. The normal amount of blood in the urine is, is uh, zero. There's not supposed to be any blood in the urine. So any blood in the urine is always abnormal. The only exception is, is uh, during uh, periods when there can be blood contamination in the urine. The blood there is coming from the vagina, not from the urethra. And what we must do then is not assume that that bleeding is caused by the uh, menstrual period. What we do is we check again in two weeks' time. And if, if the woman is still uh, positive for blood, then we would investigate that. Of course, the vast majority of times they'll become negative because uh, periods can contaminate the urine, but it's not assuming that that's the case. Blood in the urine is always abnormal, frank and occult. Now, these are terms that we come across quite a bit. Frank blood means it's obvious. Frankly, this is blood. It's obvious to anyone looking at it, looks like blood, smells like blood, it's blood. Occult blood is hidden blood. So blood might be uh, there in very small amounts. So you could have blood in the urine and not be able to detect it without putting a dipstick in. Or sometimes blood can be changed. So, for example, if someone vomits blood up, it can, it can be uh, like coffee grounds and uh, it can have an altered appearance. So remember, blood can be frank, occult or changed, suspect blood. At any time you do suspect blood, it's a very simple matter for nurses and doctors to test and see if it actually is blood. Always better to be safe than sorry in that respect. So females, if there's blood in the urine, check again in two weeks time when you're mid-cycle. So hematemesis is uh, vomiting blood. Again, that is abnormal. Now, of course, sometimes with severe vomiting, there could be a tear, for example, in the lower part of the esophagus or the stomach, which is not a cancer. But as if, there's, if there's blood in vomit, that's not normal. Again, get it checked. Blood in sputum is always abnormal. Main causes of that globally are tuberculosis and lung cancer. So blood is not supposed to be in sputum. Again, if it's there, get it checked out. Um, melina is blood from the in, in the stools. Now blood in the stools is typically, uh, we describe it typically as being dark and tarry. It depends where it came from. If it's coming from the lower part near the anus and the rectum, it can be frank blood. Uh, sometimes if you get a pile, for example, it can be very obvious blood that's present when you, when you clean yourself at the toilet. But again, we can't really assume this is from a pile. There's a possibility that it's from a, a, a higher up lesion. But if you're bleeding from the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the upper part of the gastrointestinal tract into the, into, the, uh, into the gut, then it goes through the digestive system. It gets partly digested and it comes out as this dark, tarry sort of a stool, uh, characteristic smell when you get used to smelling it. So dark, tarry stools we call melina. It's a form of altered blood. Again, consider the possibility that this is leaking, this blood is bleeding out from some form of uh, tumour. Most times we expect it won't be, but it's worth checking out, especially if it's persistent and happens uh, more than once. Again, it can be frank or occult. PV, per vaginal bleeding, so uh, between periods after sex, um, it's abnormal, and bleeding after the menopause is abnormal. So bleeding between periods after sex, postmenopausal, abnormal, get it checked out, vaginal bleeding. Even if it's only a little bit of blood, you're not supposed to bleed between periods. You're not supposed to bleed after the menopause. You're not supposed to bleed after sex. 
So even if it's just a little bit or if it's dark or altered in colour, still get it checked. Make sure it's blood first of all. As I say, a very simple test to see if it's blood. Any nurse or doctor can do that very, very readily. And if it is blood, take it further. If it's not blood, you can be reassured that it's not blood. Uh, persistent bleeding from the nose, another possibility. Now, of course, the vast majority of bleeds from the nose are, are trauma. The, the most common cause of nosebleeds, of course, is people picking their nose. The only thing you should put in your nose is the same thing you should put in your ear, and that's your elbow. So we shouldn't be picking our noses, but persistent bleeding from the nose or bleeding that's not explained from the nose, again, check out the possibility that it could be something abnormal. It could be a pre-malignant polyp. This is what often happens in, in the colon. So uh, in, in people over the age of 60, I think, in the UK now, we do annual or biannual checks to see if there's occult blood in, in the stool, just to see if there's a little bit of blood there, because that would be an abnormal finding. Very often it might be a polyp, but polyps can become malignant. So worth checking them out at an early stage. It's all about checking out at an early stage. Bruising, of course, is just bleeding into the uh, tissue. So all of Bruising is bleeding from the capillaries in the small blood vessels. That's all it is, and you get this bruise. It goes, uh, it, it's dark to begin with, uh, kind of black and blue, and then it goes a bit yellow as it starts to clear as the blood is broken down. But again, remember, bruising is just a form of bleeding. Now, discharges. You discharges, uh, when we're talking about discharges, we're normally talking about um, pus and pussy things like that. Well, it could be a serious discharge, it could be a clearer discharge. Now, discharges normally mean infection. But the thing about malignancy, if there's a, a tumour growing somewhere, whether it's a breast duct or in a respiratory passage, it alters the architecture of that structure and it can't clear its mucus and, and clear itself as it normally would. So infections become more likely. Infections are associated sometimes with discharge. So the discharge is, is usually an infection, and of course most discharges are caused by uh, infection. A urethral discharge, for example, could be a sign of a sexually transmitted disease, but occasionally the discharge can be an infection which is caused by a distortion of the normal architecture of the tissue, which would be a possible malignancy. So certainly want to check out indicate infection but tumours distort and block normal anatomy that's the key point so repeated chest infections chronic cough long-term cough should be checked out um, pus from the urethra should also be checked out although normally it would be an infection and pus from the nipple now this nearly uh, most commonly of course this occurs in uh, women but it can also occur in men there can still be bleeding from the nipple in or discharge from the nipple in men, and again, it's an abnormal finding. And of course, we've mentioned the vagina. Changes in bowel habits or bowel activity is another classic feature. Um, changes in defecation, that's just pooing. Um, frequency, consistency of the, uh, the feces, constipation, diarrhea, for example, the shape, if the stool is a, a different shape, the colour, or of this mucus associated with the shape. All of those can be abnormal. Again, normally, of course, not caused by cancers, but uh, doctors can check this out really quite uh, simply without too much difficulty. Color, dark or pale. Now, um, obviously, if the stool is dark, that can be melina, that can be blood. But if stools become a very light color, a, a, a clayey type color, that can mean the bile's not getting into them because it's the bile that colors and deodorizes the feces. And if the pancreas, if there's a tumor growing in the pancreas, that can block the bile ducts. Many other causes, of course, but pale stools are uh, always worth getting checked out. And again, a few simple blood tests can normally give you the diagnosis. These things aren't difficult for doctors and nurse practitioners and people like that to check out. Uh, floaty stools could mean there's a lot of fat in them. And again, that could mean that the pancreatic digestive enzymes are not getting through to digest the fat. So floaty stools are abnormal. Stools that are difficult to flush away could be fatty. Um, the, 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 the steatorrhea, the, the fat in the stool as a possibility. Dark urine can mean that the bile is not getting into the gut and can go, in its, uh, go into the urine. So dark urine again can be a cause, of, a symptom of pancreatic cancer. Abnormal bloating or swelling of the abdomen, again it's not normal, that should be checked. 
persistent heartburn or indigestion. Now, some people get heartburn and indigestion for, for years. I mean, I have to, I have to take uh, Lanzoprazole tablets myself sometimes just for a bit of uh, esophageal regurgitation. But if it's new or it's changing, it can be, it can be, um, it could be a, a cancer in the esophagus or in the, um, in the, in the top, in the top of the stomach, the fundus of the, the stomach would be the most likely. Many other pathologies and things that can cause it, of course, but that is one to check out. Persistent bloating, anorexia just means loss of appetite. If you've lost your appetite and you can't explain it. You know, a lot of these things are just, has it changed for you? Is this different for you? Is this not your normal? Because you know your body better than anyone else. And if it's not normal for you, think, do I need to get this checked? And we can't emphasize enough that you can be reassured in the vast majority of occasions with just a few very simple checks that nurses and doctors do absolutely routinely. The vast majority of times you can be simply reassured, but the odd time that there's something more suspicious, you, your care can be escalated to a, a diagnostic a procedure or test if that is required. Changes in bladder emptying habits. This stands for lower urinary tract symptoms. <laughs> Um, so um, if you want to know what lower urinary tract symptoms are, ask any man probably over the age of 60 or 70 and he'll tell you about it because it comes from a large prostate. But it can be uh, malignant conditions as well. So it's things like frequency of urination, difficulty initiating ur urination, uh, um, desire to urinate frequently, not urinating with a full stream, just dribbling a bit. Um, these are lower urinary tract symptoms and again, should be uh, diagnosed and very often that can be done with very simple tests again sophisticated tests aren't usually needed thickness in a tissue or a lump now of course when people talk about cancers they very often think about lumps and it's an obvious uh, feature of, of a possible cancer again it has to be stressed that most lumps are not cancer uh, there's many what we will call benign causes of lumps and and um, most times it will be that but the odd time it will be uh, a cancer. T typically cancerous lumps feel hard. Um, typically they're well fixed in the tissue. They're hard to move between finger and thumb. Typically benign lumps or benign tumors can be moved between finger and thumb like a cyst. And typically they're not as hard as malignant tumors, but that's not for you to decide. If there's a lump, get someone to feel it who does this day in, day out and can tell the difference by palpation or if necessary, can arrange a biopsy to have that properly uh, diagnosed. Again, very simple things that can be life-saving. So breast testicular cancers, of course, could present in this way. Uh, very often with testicular cancer, the first symptom is not that you feel uh, pain, but what one testes becomes heavier than the other. Best time to examine the testes, of course, is uh, after a hot bath. And if one is descending more than the other, again, possible abnormality, get it checked out. Testicular cancer is most common in young men, late 20s, early 30s. Uh, by the time you get to my age, it's less likely to occur. It's a disease mostly of young men. And there are uh, excellent treatments available for testicular cancer as long as it's caught at an early enough stage. Breast palpation, breast awareness, of course, uh, th this, is, this is fairly widely known. Self-breast examination, breast awareness, swollen lymph nodes. Lymph nodes can be uh, in different places, um, uh, under, the, under the armpits, for example, in the uh, groin at the top of the legs and under, under, the, um, under the mandible in the neck. Um, if these are swollen, again, it's not normal. Um, if, if a lymph node is swollen and painful, very often that's infection. But again, it's not really for you to decide. This is what we have doctors for. Get them to diagnose that uh, properly so you can get a, a more definitive or a fully definitive uh, diagnosis. Don't guess. This is why we have doctors. Just go and see one. I know it's not easy at the moment, but um, it, uh, it is what you need to try and do. Nagging hoarseness or, or uh, hoarseness or cough. So a cough that goes on for a long period of time or a hoarse voice that goes on for a long period of time. Now, of course, these, these are completely normal. Every time, every time we have a, a cough, uh, a, a cold or infection, you're going to get a cough, perfectly normal, but normally it goes away again after a relatively short period of time. 
COVID's a bit of an exception. It can go on for a long time. But again, get it checked out. Don't make the diagnosis yourself. A hoarse voice, again, very often simply infection, but it can be laryngeal cancers, for example, or, or even cancer in the thyroid because uh, you have nerves that go to the voice box of the recurrent laryngeal nerve, uh, goes, goes to the, uh, near, near or through the thyroid to the, to the voice box. And again, pressure in there can alter the voice. So again, that is ab an abnormal finding, one that's worth checking uh, out with your, with your healthcare provider. So again, this can be a feature of lung, laryngeal or thyroid cancers. A sore or wound which doesn't heal, something called malignant ulceration. There can be a, a cancer which is, looks like a wound, but in actual fact, it's a cancer. Uh, lesion getting bigger. So most wounds, of course, are supposed to get smaller. A lesion just means anything that's uh, abnormal. So if that's getting bigger, get it checked out. Wounds are supposed to get smaller. They're not supposed to get bigger. If it's getting bigger, that could be a cancer that is spreading. Again, most times it won't be, but, but get it checked out. Don't make the diagnosis yourself. Increasing pain from a wound or unexpected bleeding from a wound, also another uh, possibility. Unexpected bleeding from anywhere, as we've already uh, stressed, is a possible uh, feature of uh, a malignancy. Um, basal cell carcinoma, what we call rodent ulcers, non-melanoma skin cancers. Th these are all fairly obvious on the surface of the skin, but again, don't assume it's something relatively benign. Get it checked out. A new mole or changes to a mole are classic. Um, so if you have a mole where you didn't have a mole before or the mole's got bigger or it's changed in colour or it's changed in shape or it's a bit higher than it used to be or it's a bit lower than it used to be, if it's changed, get it checked out. Dermatologists can normally recognise these by sight and if they're unsure, they'll just go get a biopsy and diagnose it through the microscope because the histopathologists can tell by looking through the microscope with definitive accuracy, whether it's a normal cell or whether it's a malignant cell. They can do that quite definitively with a simple scraping or a simple biopsy in most cases. Again, mouth or tongue ulcer that lasts for more than three weeks. Again, get that checked out, go to your dentist. That's what they're trained to do. Obvious changes in a wart or a mole. Now, um, this is quite useful. Um, has it become asymmetric? Um, is it different on both sides? Have the borders become irregular? Has the colour changed, especially as it got darker, but not necessarily so? Is, that, is there changes in pigmentation? Is there variable pigmentation over the mole? Is it greater than six millimetres in diameter or is it increasing in size? A, B, C, D, E. And uh, E is for elevation. Is there bits that are higher and bits that are lower in it? If so, that can be a malignant melanoma. Now, melanomas usually caused by sunburn, but the thing with melanomas is they metastasize very quickly. Now, metastases is meta, meta to change, stasis, place. So a metastasis is when a malignant tumor spreads from the primary site where it originated to other parts of the body. And once it's in other parts of the body, it becomes remarkably difficult to treat. And the thing about malignant melanoma is it can look like a relatively small lesion, but have already metastasized. So we need to catch these very, very early. As soon as there is a change, get that checked out. Skin awareness, especially if you live in Australia or somewhere like that where it's more common. Malignant melanoma may demonstrate A, B, C, D and E. Ingestion difficulties or swallowing difficulties. Feeling of pressure in the throat or chest. Again, lung cancer, esophageal cancers can do this. Difficulty in swallowing, that's dysphagia. That can be cancer in the esophagus or frondis of the stomach or other structures in the neck uh, or indeed potentially diaphragm. Uh, night sweats or fever. If you are getting wet overnight because you're sweating, that's not normal. Get that checked out. That can be a symptom of various malignancies. It's often what we call a paraneoplastic effect. It's what goes alongside a cancer. Uh, but, but certainly, well, of course, it probably will be infection or menopause or, or other things like that. But don't you make the diagnosis yourself. That's the point. This is a possible feature of malignancy. Undue fatigue if you're tired all the time. Again, many possible causes. Um, I, I can go for days when I just feel absolutely exhausted all the time. 
I'm sure this, you're the same. Obvious thing to do is get your thyroid checked. But again, just, just bear in mind, malignancy can be a possibility. Again, doctors can do some pretty simple blood tests to reassure you uh, that this is not the case. And in the rare uh, examples where it is the case, uh, they can usually treat you or organise treatment by specialists um, well, hopefully as quickly as possible, but again, we know it's difficult at the moment. Unexplained weight loss. Um, if you're on a diet, you would lose weight. Unexplained weight loss could be something like uh, developing diabetes. Or unexplained weight loss could be uh, cancer because cancer increases the metabolism. That's why people lose weight with cancer and they get this cachexia, this extreme weight loss that can occur with cancer. So any, um, any unexplained weight loss, get that checked. Unexplained aches or pains, especially of the persistent. And this is a general principle. If something's going on for a long time, if it's not getting better, normally when we get sick, when something goes wrong, the body heals itself. If it's not healing itself, then there's a possibility of an ongoing disease process uh, that's not healing itself. And cancer is one of those. So these unexplained aches, pains and persistent features, especially if it's persistent. New blood plots are another possibility. Uh, deep venous thrombosis. So again, uh, cancer can affect the, uh, the way that this, the whole body system works. It can affect the way that um, the blood clots. And, and sometimes the first thing, the first time that people know they've got a cancer is they develop a blood clot in the leg when they've ne never developed one, so-called a deep venous thrombosis. Dangerous in themselves, potentially because they can become pulmonary embolism. This condition called venothromboembolism. But uh, blood clot, just so don't say it's a blood clot, I've had some treatment and better. Bear in mind, it could be a symptom of uh, something else. Bone pain, yeah, that, that can be a, a feature of possible um, blood type uh, cancers. Um, we'll check it out. Intercurrent infections, wherever they are. Cancer Research UK, um, they stress, what is normal for you? Is it lasting longer than normal? Is this persistent? And they do an excellent graphic I'm going to show you now. Why not print it out? Put it on your wall somewhere. There you go. Um, rather nice uh, graphic that they uh, publicise and uh, basically summarises the things that we've said there. So most times you get these features, it won't be a cancer, but uh, don't ignore it because the time you ignore it, it could be, or the time you ignore it in a, in a, in a friend, in a family member, it could be. Get it checked out, and the vast majority of times you can be reassured that it's not a cancer and go and relive the, the rest of your life uh, as normal. On the odd occasion that it is a cancer, then treatment is so much more likely to be effective is it, if it's early. Now, obviously, I've, I've seen so many people with cancers in professional life, in healthcare, um, but there's been, I don't know, I would say probably about half a dozen occasions where someone's come to me and said something that makes me think, oh, just a minute. So um, they might say, you know, I had some blood in my urine last month and it seems to have gone away now, so I'm just forget about it. It was only one occasion. No, you don't. Get that checked out. Blood in the urine is always abnormal. So this simple information uh, in, in, in just in my normal fa um, family social life interactions um, has actually resulted in, in a few people being... Um, the vast majority, of course, were reassured by the doctors. One or two have been diagnosed with something that needed treatment and lives have been saved because advice was given to seek medical help uh, at an early stage. So there we go. We'll leave it there. Lots of information. No apologies for that. We had to go through that. Um, it is concerning that we are seeing more cancers being diagnosed at the moment, and I suspect for reasons I'm not going to go into on this video, that we might be seeing more cancers diagnosed, I'm afraid, over the next few years. High index of suspicion, early treatment, massively increase the probability of uh, successful outcomes. Thank you for watching.